Hi folks, welcome to the Cockpit Studio and I'm just reflecting on some of the history that I have with Gordon Smith and Gordy guitars. So this goes back to the mid 70s. I hadn't long been working in the UK and I joined a band of brothers <laughs> down in uh, Stoke-on-Trent, which eventually became the Cyril Dagworth Players. This was a collective of writers and players, uh, highly experienced guys, which included Des Parton, George Glover, John Wright, Ronnie Smith. And my pal Glenn and I joined that band. And whilst we were rehearsing, a chap turned up with a guitar that looked very much like a Les Paul special, but in fact was handmade in Manchester. His name was Gordon Whitton. And he was introduced to us by Pete Johnson, who used to uh, have a custom at crew shop. And he offered it to us to try out and feedback to him, which is what we were happy to do. It was a great sounding guitar, single pickup, um, mahogany body, mahogany neck, etc. As far as I remember, it was called the Rocker. And it became one of the staple designs of uh, what Gordon Smith are now known for. So that was my first meeting with Gordon. And fast forward two or three years from that, I was working in a band called Poacher, which uh, was my main job for 14 years. And... Whilst I owned a couple of Gibsons, Adrian, the guitar player with Poacher as well, um, he also had a wonderful um, Gibson custom. And I felt that my sound wasn't really blending to the way I wanted it to with, with Adrian's sound. So I felt that the need was to change to a Fender. And so I got in touch with Pete, who was uh, only you know a few miles away, and uh, <clears throat> well known for his collection of guitars, and the shop was always, uh, you know, well stocked. So I, I rang him up and I said, uh, I'm looking for a Strat. And he said, well, I've got a lovely 1958 here. He said, but you can't afford it. Um, it was 800 quid. I wish. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could have afforded it. It'd be worth a lot more now. But he said he'd got a, a really nice... Stratocaster, which was handmade by that chap you know, Gordon Whittam and his boys up at Gordon Smith Guitars. So I said, I'll be down very shortly and we'll give it a run and see what it's like. So I turned up and this toffee apple burgundy Stratocaster was on the wall with a maple neck, uh, a bullet truss rod, similar to the late uh, 60s and 70s designs. Um, and uh, the typical Strat layout, three pickups, and I played through an amplifier and was immediately impressed with it. So what we thought had happened is that the design was a mahogany body with a maple neck and large frets, enabling the search for extra sustain, um, especially with Fender designs. So I got that guitar, and uh, it became our workhorse guitar for many years, in fact. Um, and over the years, things do happen with guitars. And one of the uh, examples is I was on a festival um, with the guitar and I was on stage and it was susceptible to uh, light and uh, electrical interference. And on that particular occasion, I had an immense amount of trouble with noise and interference on stage and at one particular instance my guitar came out of every amplifier that was switched on it was unbelievable it was just like how do we get rid of this because uh you know um it turned out that there was an induction loop in the building and it was switched on for those hard of hearing and uh my guitar was in it was interacting with this and Every speaker that was on, it came out of. It was incredible. So yeah, that was enough for me. I, I mean, I did actually put copper um, foil inside and to try and 
uh, shade it from the that particular interference. That didn't work. So the job was to put new pickups in. So eventually, I actually found uh, a set of uh, lace sensors, and I replaced the pickup. But lace sensors I like and have used them on many guitars. So that guitar got a new lease of life, really, um, and it has had different scratch plates on it. It's a general dog's body guitar, which I still own. Um, and the serial number for that was 0175. And uh, I think it's soon to have a replacement Gordon Smith uh, decor because that one's worn away. Beautiful neck. It was, uh, and I'll show you some pictures of it later. Okay, so fast forward a couple of years from that, and I'd been uh, I'd traded my uh, my Gibsons, and uh, I'd also purchased a real beaten up old Burns, which I was using as a backup guitar for the one seven five Strat, and it got stolen outside our studio along with the martin acoustic which we never found and i was desperate to i always believed in having two guitars on stage with me uh so i was desperate to replace that old burns which was a, a great little guitar to use as the backup should you break a string and so i went to gordon uh, with an idea which was to create uh, a model which was a model that I had not been playing before, which is Telecaster style, uh, with three Strat style pickups. Um, the discussion also looked at uh, the possibility of putting a humbucker in the bridge. Gordon wasn't so keen on that and, and uh, decided that he'd try and make a hot single coil, which was quite uh, adventurous, really. And it would be a Stratocaster uh, shaped pick guard on a Telecaster body, but designed to fit the Telecaster body. So in, all in all, it was a, a different style of guitar. Uh, not unlike what some session men were doing by adding a, a middle pickup to their Telecasters um, to, to make the guitar basically a lot more versatile. So that was decided on and the other thing was that my pal glenn who, who'd uh, been with me in a couple of bands before including the Cyril dagworth players he decided he'd have one as well so but this time he was going to have a stop tail so that project went ahead in and delivery was 1984 um and glenn and i both parted our ways with each with our own guitar and that guitar was a, a really great workhorse for me in the studio and also on stage. Um, it was quite a heavy ash body with some beautiful grain in it. And uh, I used that for quite some time. During that time in the studio, using it uh, to, you know, produce tracks for people, uh, a country singer called Bob McKinley came in and he was really an acoustic guitar player. Um, had a very, very nice J200. And he saw me playing this guitar on one of his tracks. He said, I really like that. Um, what do you do to get one? You know, I said, well, you, t you ring Gordon up and ask him, can he make a guitar for you? And he said, it it's probably too heavy for me because I play acoustic guitar. I said, well, talk to him about that. And, uh, oh, I'd need a wider neck. Talk to him about that as well because it's a custom shop. It'll do whatever you want, you know. And one day I was in Frailer's shop in Roncorn. So Barry Gaskell, who was working there, said to me, you know that guitar that Bob had made? And I went, well, not really. Anyway, it's for sale. So I said, OK, well, let's, I'll go and have a look at it then. So I drove up to Rochdale, which is one of the shops where it was displayed, and asked to try it. Having done so, realised that this was a monster guitar that had been built and uh immediately left the shop rang bob and said i'll have the guitar just get it out of the shop and we'll, we'll do a deal the deal was done and what had happened was it, it gordon had chambered the body it was a mahogany body with a, a, a veneered top and uh looked really great tobacco sunburst wide neck 
really quite comfortable to play and that became my real number one guitar for a long long time it didn't have a tremolo on it so the other one came in useful but what i found about the other ash bodied uh cherry red guitar was that it was too heavy so again i went back to gordon i said i'm actually we made a pub and i said you know that guitar and he said it's sounding great i said i know it's sounding great but it's too heavy and i'm on stage for two and a half hours you know and he's Ugh. um so he said i'll oh, leave it with me i'll see what i can come up with so a few weeks later probably two or three months later he rang me up and said i've got that body for you and uh he said it's not finished it's it's just you know I, i've just stained it so i said well, that's fine as long as it works he said well come and pick it up you put it all together you know and uh carry on as normal which i did i i fitted um in, in uh, the early 90s i fitted a guitar synth to it um and it took on a whole new vibe you know um so that was the kind of relationship i was having with the luthiers uh in my local manchester area and it's highly valuable if you're out on the road and you're looking for new ideas or trying to have something that's not going to let you down so moving forward a little bit both of those guitars the gordy guitars got well used um the stratocaster 2 the gordon smith stratocaster was used on a lot of gigs and actually i i did actually leave it in guernsey for a little while so that i could go back home and the guitar was already there for me uh, which is useful when you're traveling on aircraft um so th they were my workhorse guitars uh eventually i traded the uh, what we'll call the gaudy one with a, a good pal who who took it to canada and it's still there um uh, he keeps updating me with pickup changes and refrets and stuff like that. It still has a life and it's still much loved. Um, along the way, I picked up um, a prototype Gordon Smith Galaxy, which uh, was a really heavy guitar, but it was beautiful. It was really, really lovely. It, it had a massive maple top on it and a real nice carve to it but it was just far too heavy beautiful inlay uh beautiful binding fantastic ebony fingerboard and it sounded really good but you had to be sat down so after a few years of hang hanging on the wall and, and looking at it lovingly uh, i did use it a, a little a little bit um but i i did actually trade that for uh, a gordon smith gypsy es uh, which uh, I use quite a lot, but sadly uh, it, uh, it it got broken very, very oddly. I, I took it out of the car and opened the case, and it, well, there it was in two pieces. So I took it back to John and Chris at Gordon Smith, and they uh, did what they do, and it was stronger than it would ever be. Um, eventually, though, I, I traded that on. So there you are. Support your local luthier and... Ask them to design specialist items for you, something that can deliver. Anyway, enough from me. Thanks for watching. And uh, as I said before, support your local luthier. See you again soon. Bye-bye.